Science often plays an enormous role in all of this, and I give you uh, uh, one example which uh, bears upon the uh, struggle over uh, abortion and whether uh, a conceptus uh, is a person. It uh, used to, some people suggest, indeed I had one of my colleagues suggest to me, Paul, no factual information will settle this moral dispute between uh, uh, the pro-choice and the pro-life people on, on whether the uh, conceptus is a person. And, uh, well, what do you think, I said. Well, uh, he said, and here I think quite wisely, saying that the conceptus is like a person is like saying that an acorn is an oak tree or that an apple seed is a full-grown apple tree. He says it's just a conceptual confusion. This is a, a dear old colleague of mine, uh, um, born in the, uh, uh, the analytic tradition of uh, Oxford and Cambridge. And I said, well, that's very interesting, because here's a piece of information from the history of science having to do with seeds and why they grow into things. Did you know that 400 years ago, biologists, here I'm speaking to my colleague, did you know that 400 years ago, biologists uh, uh, or alchemists or natural philosophers believed that inside each apple seed or each acorn or indeed anything along that line, there was an elan vital or a vital spirit or an archaeus, uh, to use a Latin term. There were a variety of terms for it, and it was conceived to be a spiritual thing that was already inside the acorn and already inside the apple seed and which steered the development of the acorn or the apple seed into its triumphant realization as a oak tree or an apple tree. And we learned, as a matter of scientific fact, that that isn't how it works. We can find the DNA inside seeds and inside acorns, and we've given up the dualist theory of... Um, uh, apples and acorns, and so nobody is seen to be guilty for destroying an entire oak forest or destroying an entire apple orchard for taking a handful of apple seeds and uh, flushing them down the toilet or taking a handful of acorns and throwing them to the local squirrel. That's not a case of mass herbicide uh, for reasons we can now defend uh, using modern science. Uh, the suggestion, of course, is that we are in the process of discovering, or we've already discovered, now we're in the process of trying to convince people in general, that a conceptus isn't any different from an apple seed or an acorn. They're already fertilized, if you like. They already contain what's needed. Now, here's an example of something we can learn from science that bears directly on a moral issue of great importance to a whole society, but it is only one example of hundreds and thousands and millions, and we are up to our neck in the learning process, even as the elections take place today. Because for the last couple of years, we've been living under one political, moral, economic uh, organization, and there are suggestions on the ballot to modify it in small ways. And this has been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years, indeed for thousands, indeed the process of changing the cultural matrix into which we are uh, uh, all uplifted when we're born has been going on since uh, for 100,000 years, 50,000 years anyway. There is this process of cultural learning, and I suggest that humanity had a detailed conception of what was moral and what was not, what was just and what wasn't, what was fair and what wasn't, that antedated by far Christianity or even Buddhism or Zoroastrianism. Uh, we have been learning slowly what are the apt, appropriate, fair, just, manageable, stable ways of organizing our collective existence for a long time. So we don't need to make, it for scratch, uh, make a morality from scratch. I'm inclined to think that something like uh, Christianity or uh, Islam, uh, the doctrines that they will lay out for uh, uh, your uh, moral approval, are rationalizations written after the fact, and they're intelligible to people most, for the most part only because we already have a systematic social conscience, a systematic way of uh, social understanding. The take-home lesson here is that where morality comes from, it comes from long experience, just as that's where science comes from. It comes from long experience, and the process that's where science comes from. It comes from long experience, and the process is slow, and the hope that you can settle something quickly by finding a touchstone which will serve you forever is something which has infected badly most of the world's 
major religions, but occasionally even somebody like Rene Descartes or John Rawls. I don't think it's so easy. I think it's hard. And if this is true, then dogma, which I think I agree with uh, uh, Sam Harris, is the basic problem here. The religions are just outstanding exponents of this uh, unfortunate feature. Dogma is the really uh, difficult problem here, because if you think you already have the absolute truth, whether scientific or moral, then, and it's given to you by God, then you have a problem. You can no longer learn. Absolute truth is immutable. And that is the most tragic thing at all. I think about the predations that all of the world's religions have tended to uh, visit upon the human race. In order to buy a needed authority, they bought too much, and it's self-defeating. If you are infallible, if your laws are already perfect, then you can't possibly learn anything more from experience. And that is a tragedy, because any creature that stops learning dies. Thank you very much.